à toutes et bienvenue sur Marlex and Game. On se retrouve pour du Trend Breaker et on continue l'histoire qu'on aime tant. Donc cette fois, euh, je, je, je sais pas s'il va y avoir énormément de combats sur cet épisode. Parce que bon, on arrive à la fin quand on regarde la carte, c'est vraiment euh, la fin de la, de la partie. Enfin de la partie de la carte hein, en quelque sorte. Voilà. On va voir ce qui va se passer. Voilà. Bruva stood by the bridge like a statue, arms crossed, eyes squinting. Meave sighed inside. She stood little chance of having a pleasant chat. Elder in chief, sir. No Saren and Grayson here, lass. Plowed humans. Always out to fix things, always end up cocking them up. You think you're due glory, do you? Monster slayer Meave, patroness of dwarves, blast it. What do you think? Why didn't I exterminate those beasts myself, eh? Go on, tell me! For you. For I didn't want to. For something didn't affect, damn it. So I resolved to not destroy their nests and evidence till I learned the truth of who done it. Postponed it all those years expressly. Though your subjects were dying. I didn't need no lectures from the likes of you. Justice must be served. That's worth any price. And, and now, it's all gone to hell. You flooded the Vore's abyss. You brought Boros rump down on itself. And <laughs> I'll never ken who killed the Fuchses. Understand? Never! I would not be so sure. Sure of bloody what? That you shall never learn the truth. For I learnt it just moments ago. Twas the Zigrins who killed the Fuchses. The Zigrins? But. Ah, je suis obligé de le dire du coup. Je me suis dit. Explain a lot that. Ah, the snakes, worms, rogues. Why, I'll show them. All right. Got to admit you've more in that pretty heat of yours than I expected. But dinner, you start thinking we'll be toasting a new friendship. You want our aid? You'll have to answer our questions. My questions. Lots of them. And they're all hard. So dinner you go smiling at me yet. Why, I wouldn't dare. Better not. Right. Time we moved on. Bruva set off at a brisk pace, paying Meave nor anyone else heed. The Elder's bodyguards rushed after him, then came the Lyrian force, and at its end trudged Gabor Zigrin. Dommage, elle était sympa comme carte, mais il y a un moment donné où ils m'ont quand même trahi d'un côté. Taper du pied, sauter, se pencher au-dessus du site, s'arrêter pour faire une pause, graver des runes sur les gardes de vous. Wanted to hunt monsters, eh? Dwarves demonstrate innovative thinking in many domains. Metallurgy, engineering, architecture. Yet there is one in which they could not be bothered. Naming. For this reason, the bridge that linked the Mahakam Pass with Mount Carbon was simply named Langbridge. Meave learned it was a thoroughly fitting name. Having stopped for a breath halfway across the road suspended over a deep chasm, the Queen could see neither end of the bridge, both concealed oui, by bah thick clouds. Amazing, whispered the Queen. I feel as though we traverse the very sky. The Queen and her retinue were nearing Mount Carbon when Meave heard a cry. It was Xavier. Hold! Hold! Meave drew in her reins abruptly. Her mare neighed and reared, lifting the Queen above her formation of men. From that height, she saw the last pier of the bridge crumbling. The dwarves at the head of the procession were unable to stop in time and plummeted, screaming into the abyss. What's the up. meaning of this, God damn it? Bruva roared. Face the engineers! No! The queen was striving to calm her spooked mount when she sent something swish past her ear. Out of oh. nowhere, a Scoyatel band had appeared at the rear of the column. Before anyone could react, elven archers had felled the rear guard. 
The soldiers lay on the bridge's stone surface with arrows in their backs. Meave was trapped. In one direction lay the chasm, in the other, a fierce foe. She had no choice but to stand and fight. Comme des coyotes. Je vais les saigner. Bataille histoire est courte et carte supplémentaire du coup parce qu'il y a les nains qui vont arriver et nous aider, je pense, un bro vert spécialement. Peut-être qu'il sera là, on va voir ce qu'il donne comme carte. Je doute que je puisse gagner cette carte quand même, mais Alors, voilà, n'importe de ma canne, déplacer une unité d'une ligne afin de l'éloigner de l'adversaire. Deux protecteurs vont atteindre, déplacer un ennemi, ok d'accord, ok, 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 ok. At last, Rena, you are mine. We trapped you, Grace, but we can try and fight our way through. Salut. Alors, inflige deux points de dégâts à unité si elle est déjà améliorée. Inflige deux points de dégâts. Ouh là 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 là. Ça, ça fait mal. Ah, c'est quoi Regarde-moi ça. Regarde-moi ça. This could hurt. Special prize, just for you, love. Si j'attaque comme ça, fini. Alors, bon, tant que je le fasse en fait. Hein. Voilà. Tout simplement, mettre une bière. Six points de dégâts à peut me faire. Hmm. You poor bags can do whatever the devils you please. This is Mahakam. Ah, pas mal. J'ai pas vu uh, deux protecteurs américains déplacer un ennemi de la ligne de combat rapprochée vers la ligne de combat distant. Euh, génial, génial. Quatre points d'armure. Allez, franchement, euh, sympa comme carte là. Sans déconner, c'est très sympa. Show me the coin or sort off. Non, ça serait bien qu'il y ait des Un peu plus sympathique, on va dire. Fort, je pense. Again and again and again. Hmm. Watch your heads! <rire> euh, toujours la même. Mais voilà, ça fait rien de toute façon, ça sert à rien. Par contre, du coup. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? Voilà. Normalement. Euh... Swords I smile at. Weapons laugh to scorn. Ah, détruire une unité endommagée. Celle-là peut me la détruire complètement. Euh, malheureusement, je ne vais pas pouvoir. Parmagam. C'est pas grave. Death to humans! I'd hoped we could solve this some other way. Allez, une autre carte, puis je pousse les trois cartes dans le vide. Now we will see who is weak. Là, c'est bon. Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. 189. Allez, fais mieux.
What you looking at? C'est magnifique. Putain, j'aurais pu le faire à chaque fois en fait. Oh là là. Quel bête. Hein. Je l'ai pas fait. No! Let her in! She must die! Magnifique. Their strength combined, the Lyrians and Dwarves managed to defeat the Scoia'tael. The Gorillas had weakened the last span of the bridge, turning the crossing into a deadly trap. Had Xavier, who noticed the weakened structure at the last instant, not called out, all would have fallen into the chasm. The Lyrians managed to capture the unit commander. She stood, her head raised high, and when Meave glared at her, she did not avert her eyes. Oh, de corbeau. Oh, tiens. What is your name, elf? Abayat met a parsed one. D'accord. She said. Uh... Thank you, Reynard. I know well what she said. Oui. Kiss my ass. Is that truly the best you can muster? <laughs> I'd rather show you exactly what I can muster. Tell them to unbind me. You got your opportunity on the battlefield. Will you not tell me what they call you? Fine. It's all the same to me. I'm more interested to know how you came to be here. No one. It was my decision to kill you, and thus avenge Eldane. Do you remember him? The elf whom you denied a burial? Whom you left in an open field to rot? You've elven blood on your hands. The blood of the elves of the Mulderwood. Eldane was a criminal. He got what he deserved. You call him a criminal? What do you call humans who murder our kind in pogroms? Who massacre us? What do you call Black Rayla who fought at your side? Do not dare compare us. Do not dare! Enough. I've heard all I wish to hear. But I have not. Did you fall in your heed, Elf, eh? If you want to fight humans, go on and do it. You cannot talk sense to Egypts and nay here, damn it. Mahakam is and will be neutral. You cannot be neutral. To Dwan, you are either their foe or their dog. Mahakam has stood aside sleeping long enough. That is why we struck it in its very heart. As a call to battle. A call to brethren whom you, Elder, have kept from the world too long. I have kept him away. I've been bloody right to do so. You want to play at war, you numpties? You want to force the Pontar to flow upstream? Gang right ahead! Good riddance, I say! Gang kill, gang die if you fancy! But <laughs> God <laughs> damn it, leave us alone! <laughs> yeah, okay. I should kill you! With my own hands! I should cut your throat, put you out of your misery! That's what you want, in it? To die? To die a stupid death? Well, I'll not grant you that. Nay, nay, I'll lock you in a tower. Sit there three centuries, and you just might grow a brain. Bruva Hoog gazed after the shackled elf as she was led away. Neve expected him to continue fuming, cursing her. But the dwarf stood silent. And his old eyes, half concealed by brows bushy as a forest floor, showed not anger but the deepest sadness. Dwarven engineers made quick work of repairing the crumbled bridge span. Xavier pour l'aider. Hein. Bon allez. Putain, je gagne beaucoup là. Rush. Look, Mount Carbon. Damn. And I thought Novograd was big. C'est beau quand même. The Lyrians stepped inside Mount Carbon's bowels. Meave rode while looking upwards, admiring the intricately carved ceiling, gilded walls, monumental bas reliefs carved from basalt. Yet this was no time to admire the sights. Ruva Hoog had summoned her to speak. I thank you for your invitation, Elder. My invitation? Choice term, lass. You wangled your way in here. Long I've lived, 
But ne'er have I seen a wench so stubborn. With all due respect, do you not feel like a pot conversing with a kettle? Ha! <laughs> True enough. Changes of mind didn't come easy to me. But they do come at times. Human wars concern me not at all. For so many they are, who could count them? Near a year goes by without one wanking king invading another's realm. A dog with scabies is less restless. That's why this morning I aimed to send you off with nothing. Mattered not what the clans were saying. Revia, Schmivia, who gives a sheep's fart? But that was this morn, before that daft wench and her pups attacked. Nilfgaard supports the Scoyatel, it's common knowledge. Nilfgaard uses them. Well, I'm nay worse, and I choose to use Queen Meave. So what use would you make of me, if I might ask? Aye, the kind dwarves like best. Simple, but sneaky. Like to give Nilfgaard a warning, you can. If you're going to rile my dwarves, draw them into the Scoyatel ranks. You'll regret it, aye? But I'd like to issue the warning mm -hmm. without declaring war. All clear to you so far. So, when you march out of Mahakam, You'll find a company of our foot dwarves waiting out with the gate. Officially, volunteers enlisting with you against my will. And you're to put them at the fore next time you face Nilfgaard. Want the black lads to break their teeth on our bucklers, get a taste of our axe blades. After that, dare say they'll think twice before they send more Scoyatel into these hells. I do not. Thank you, Elder. You restore my hope that I shall have my home back in the end. Faith can move mountains, aye, but it cannot do much about borders. I've watched you close, and must admit you're a plucky lass. That enough for Nilfgaard? Can I be sure? We will see. We shall know soon. Encore de volontaire. Mutilateur de Macam. Porte bouclier de Macam. Donc ça, c'est mon l'air assez intéressant. I would like to march at once. So by your leave. Nay, not granted. At once. What's that mean? Our laws are clear. Guests are to be sent off with a thundering feast. Even the humans. Bruva, as was Bruva's wont, insisted. So the queen accepted the invitation. But as was her wont, set a condition. The All clans were to be represented at the feast. Save one, of course, the Zigrins. For they had already learned their punishment. The entire clan was banished from Mahakam. When the sun had retired behind the peaks, the underground city came alive with the sound of bugles, bagpipes and horns. The dwarves emerged out into the central square and danced exuberantly, sparks kicking up from their hobnail boots. The usually crabby elder-in-chief Hoog proved a cordial host that evening. Let's drink! Lest our neck shafts grow cobwebs! Suddenly a messenger arrived. Bruva lifted his copper horn to his ear and listened with furrowed brow. What's that? Speak up! When she saw a sour grin on his face, Meave knew the tidings were not good. Yet she did not suspect they pertained to her directly. Meave, you expecting anyone? Manon. How's that? Runner says a delegation's arrived at Carbon. Freluria and Rivia got oh, a Nilfgaardian oh. escort. How dare they? Traitors. Who leads it? Uh, you best sit. Who leads the delegation? It's your son. Villain, I fear. Villain. Markham remains neutral as regards all your squabbles. I trust I needn't remind you. So I'll have no scrambling nor shoving, and certainly no bloodshed. Point of fact, I'd prefer it if you... I wish to speak to him. I'd forbid you, but, as I said, never seen a more stubborn wench. All righty then, jabber away with him. Just remember, hands to yourself. Meave spotted banners, a Lyrian eagle upon one surrounded by Nilfgaard's black rags. 
Her hands became fists, showing how helpless she felt. Then her son and rival, Willem, emerged from behind a row of Imperial footmen. My, my. I should apologize. It seems I missed the coronation. Congratulations, my son. Who was it who placed the crown? General Epdahi? Count Caldwell. Ah, yes. Our elder statesman. Why have you come here, of all places? To acquire arms for Nilfgaard? As my official mission, yes. Yet unofficially, I wish to speak with you. I trust you've had tidings from the field. Edern turned to ash and dust. Vizimir murdered Redania in chaos. Faltus forced to strike a pact by his vassals betrayed. Hensult the same. This limerick, will it come to a point? Why, yes. To the same as this war. Mother, I beg you, you must see it. N Nilfgaard's victory is inevitable. Surrender now, and I shall show you mercy. For later... Lull. Later, it'll be too late. There will be no later. We shall repel them, drive them south at the points of our pikes. This we, Mother, who precisely do you mean? You st I prefer to stand alone over standing with Nilfgaard, with the invader, as you do. Mother, in declaring for the Empire, I saved the lives of thousands of our subjects. And in so doing, our honor lost. Folk who had their huts burned down care deeply about our honor. Is that truly your belief? When I was crowned, a fact you deride, though that makes it no less true, I swore the good of my subjects would guide me. And a war we are doomed to lose cannot in any way benefit them. And slavery can. You know well the Blacklads put peasants in chains. Like cattle. Reprehensible, I agree, but... And resettlement? Forced labor? Cruel laws that make death the punishment for the slightest offenses? Are those benefits? I see I will not sway you, Mother. A shame, though I take comfort in the fact I tried. And now, a Jew. Oh, no. I, not you, will decide when this conversation is over. Oh, have we anything else to discuss? Are you perhaps aware that the Nilfgaardians tried to kill me? What? No, I, I... I heard only about an avalanche. Which tumbled down through no small effort of an Imperial envoy. Never would I have agreed to such a heinous act. I believe you. I'm heartened that despite all we... I believe you because I believe the Nilfgaardians wouldn't ever have asked your opinion. Think on it, son. Are you their ally or their tool? Mm. Can you ever be sure? I am the king of Lyria and Rivia. To serve my subjects' best interests, I am prepared to make even the most painful concessions. Might I leave now? Or is there more? Naturally. How did you know you would find me here? I... I received Nilfgaardian reports to the effect that you've been seen in the pass. Oh, roses are red and so are your cheeks, my son. As ever when you're caught in a lie. Lyria is two weeks' travel hence. Had you received word only once I was here, we'd have been long gone from Mahakam by the time you assembled a force and completed the march. No. You were forewarned of our intended route. It means I've a traitor in my ranks. Get out of my sight, villain. And pray we only ever face one another on neutral ground. Meave struggled inside not to turn and gaze once more at her son. He'd changed since they'd last faced each other, grown manlier. And he wore the crown well. The queen returned to the banquet hall. Her advisers shot her questioning glances, curious what she had discussed with Bruva. But Meave decided to keep the details to herself. One of them wore a Nilfgaardian lead around his neck. Until she knew who, she would have to remain vigilant. Feasting's done, Reynard. We must consider our next move. I've thought on it, Your Grace. We've strength enough to hit the foe, but still not the numbers to face him in open battle. So what do you propose? This war we cannot win alone, nor even with the dwarves at our side. But if we secure a victory, small yet symbolic, we shall show the other realms of the north all is not yet lost. Thus, I propose we attack behind the front lines, somewhere well clear of any major imperial force. Right. Where would you suggest? I'm considering Angren. To begin with, a thickly wooded marshy land, always helpful in clandestine operations. Secondly, 
The land's strategically important, as it's the chief source of building material for Nilfgaard's fleets. All too little, I fear. Since we require a victory that would be symbolic, we must strike where it shall hurt, and- Just recently welcomed a new regent, in the person of Count Caldwell. My third argument. Naturally, if your majesty wishes, I'm prepared to present alternatives to this. No need. We march at dawn. Neve had toiled, cajoled, persuaded, and gained the dwarves' support. She left Mahakam strengthened markedly. Even so, the queen was in a foul mood. For it was clear a traitor, a viper, nested among the Lyrians. Someone who had conveyed the queen's plans to her foe. From this moment on, Neve would need to weigh every word she uttered, even in the presence of her closest associates. Your Grace, we must plot our course forward. Shall we take the Western Passage into Angren, or...? Not now. When, then? Dawn approaches, yet we know nothing of where... I will not repeat myself. The Queen knew she would learn the traitor's identity in the end. If need be, she would tear the name from the throat of another turncoat, Count Caldwell. Meave drooled at the prospect of seeing Caldwell in chains, then passing him to the hangman. Saddle the horses. I shall take the fall. The time for diplomacy, for preparations and negotiations had gone. Meave was to attack her foe at last, and she could not wait to do so. C'est magnifique, c'est magnifique. Maintenant, qui peut être le traître Reynard ou Gascon Ça tombe, c'est quelqu'un d'autre, hein, mais... Euh, je sais pas pourquoi, mais... At long last, Meave's force reached Angren's marshy woods. Ever been? No? Count yourselves lucky. Are you certain we haven't lost our way? Alas, here there is no way. We continue south, that's all. South meaning the bottom. Should you ever venture there, I offer you this advice. Do your utmost to make no noise. <laughs> Poor soul. His comrades cried out, reached out. But alas, amidst frothing waters, they heard bones cracking, the moan of metal bent and crushed. What the bloody hell? What was that? Rather not know, personally. Hold your positions. Arms at the ready. It was a glusty war. One of many the Lyrians would encounter along their path. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. At last, Meave and her force stood upon the Yaruga's bank. To find and punish the traitor Caldwell, they would have to cross the river. Yet the sole bridge nearby was in Nilfgaard's hands. Bon, bah écoutez, on va s'arrêter là. Some new reports require your attention. Donc j'irai voir un peu les reports de mon côté. Euh, voir un peu la carte, comment aller. Bah, elle est bien balèze, hein. <coughs> mmh, ouais, 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 ouais. Comme d'hab, elle est bien... Elle est bien comme il faut, hein, on va dire. Bon, bah écoutez, merci d'avoir regardé cette vidéo. N'oubliez pas de mettre un j'aime et de vous abonner. Allez, on se dit à la prochaine. Bye bye.